Hi, in this video, I am going to show you how I use Obsidian in four specific use cases. First, how I'm managing my projects inside of Obsidian. I have all of my projects listed inside of this software and I'm working on them thanks to the slow burn method. I'm going to show you that in a sec. Then the second points we'll cover is having new ideas inside of Obsidian. Thanks to the Zettelkasten method that I built inside of Obsidian, how can I allow new ideas to emerge from the content I collected inside of it? Then we're going to see how I'm creating content inside of Obsidian. I will show you my content publication dashboard and I will also show you my outlines uh, for when I'm making content. And finally, we'll speak about journaling, how I am journaling uh, inside of Obsidian, thanks to first micro journaling and also how I am organizing all of my notes. So here we go. Okay, so let's begin with how I am managing projects. So as you can see right here, I have got a projects folder inside of my vault in Obsidian. Inside of this project folder, I've got all of my projects that are listed as folders inside of this project folder. And I also have got another thing that is called an incubator. And inside of this incubator are all of my project ideas that are not yet as mature as the, as the one that have folders. Then whenever I've got I finished a project, my book, for example, is published, I will just grab this folder and put it inside of the archive folder right here. I also have got another type of projects, which are more long term projects that I call caps, which are basically areas of responsibility in your life. For example, uh, the administrative stuff about my company, my reflections about my company or the thing we're going to see at the last point of the video, my life phases to, to do my journaling and planning. So what do I put inside of those folders? Well, I'm putting pretty much everything concerning those projects. It can be, well, just notes like this. This is, for example, ads. This is a mail I needed to send. This is uh, brainstorming about the marketing for a new brand. This could be anything. And I also have got in the same folder also that I'm also opening inside of Obsidian, all of the different stuff. For example, my assets right here, uh, my logo, my favicon, my, my background and everything. For example, right here, I'm learning biology. So I've got all of my um, scans of my book that I'm using to learn uh, biology. And so this folder architecture allows me to centralize everything. I'm no longer just separating my notes, my productivity, and my files, but everything is linked together. Because in my projects, I will also have the roadmap. Um, so a roadmap is basically from the moment I'm here to the, to the moment the project is finished, all of the steps that I need to take in the right order. So for example, if we take this project right here, if I open the roadmap, I will have all of the tasks that I need to accomplish to build this project. And everything, also the productivity is stored inside of the same folder. It's way easier for me to manage all of my productivity like that. But now the question that you are probably asking yourself is Elliot, where are you storing all of those folders? Are they inside of Obsidian Publish, inside of, our, of your Obsidian folder? Where are they? Well, I decided to store all of my folders, all of my files on Dropbox. As you can see right here, this is exactly the same folder architecture. I'm just opening it inside of Obsidian. You know, when I'm choosing to open a vault, I'm just doing this and then open uh, a folder as vault and I'm just choosing um, the same folder I just showed you. And as you can see, this folder is stored inside of Dropbox. Um, this way, well, I have pretty much unlimited storage. I don't have to need to have, I don't, I don't need to have an external hard drive. I can just do this and then make, make online only. So it's really easy for me, uh, again, convenient. And also one of the best thing is that they have a history of version of an, a, a file. So for example, if uh, by mistake, I'm just deleting this and closing the note, I do not have access to the command Z or control Z uh, to do one step back anymore. So, well, either I'm screwed or I have Dropbox that allows me to have a new story of the version. And this way I can just restore the version that was just previous uh, to the moment I, um, I just deleted something in this note, you know? So this is quite a useful thing. And I don't know, it's just in, in a frictionless experience. Like Dropbox for me is kind of like um, a sort of 
like romantic relationship because I do not have yet found its problems, you know. Anytime I am modifying a file, it syncs automatically with all of my devices. I never had a sync problem. Well, it's just the perfect software for me anyway. Uh, so this is how I am managing my projects inside of Obsidian. And so how can I do slow burn? meaning working on the projects in the background thanks to this uh, folder architecture. Well, basically, when every time I have a discussion with someone or I see something on the internet that could be linked in some way to uh, one of my projects, when I'm just capturing this ID or this resource inside of the right project, inside of the right folder, for example, here, this was an inspiration for me. Uh, I just, like... So it's uh, in Instagram. And so I just took this Instagram profile and I just added it to my folder. This way, whenever I will want to have inspiration, I will be able to look at this again. And so whenever I, I want to accomplish a project, most of the time, most of the work I needed to do is already done because I captured everything I need for this project inside of Obsidian. Let's now move on to the second point, which is having new ideas. You might already have heard of Zettelkasten. Zettelkasten is basically an organization method that says the following thing. Every content we consume is basically an assembly of concepts. So the idea is to identify those concepts and to isolate them inside of their own notes. This way, well, you have all of your concepts that are in their own notes and you can assemble them much more easily inside of your own content, inside of your own creations. So what I decided to do is basically opening a garden inside of my Obsidian and putting all of my notes. So each note you see here is um, a concept and all of those concepts right here are in the same folder. And the only way to structure those concepts are logical links. What you see on this graph uh, is the graph view of Obsidian, but each note is each point is a note and each link you're seeing inside of them uh, is like th those links, for example, um, each link is a logical link. And so this is the only way to structure the different concepts inside of my system. And so for example, if I'm going right here, so it's a note about de demand crisis in economy. So it's in French, I'm sorry about this. But then I can see all of the links that are connected to this note. So they are right here, for example, uh, eviction effects, or then another thing, and so on and so on. Uh, and so I can just like, you know, go from concept to concept like this and have new ideas by doing this work. And this is how I am having most of my new ideas. I'm just, you know, spending 30 minutes inside of Obsidian because I don't have anything to do. I'm opening my graph. I'm putting it at, for example, two levels of depth. And I'm just watching what, what what's here. So for example, I can just watch all of the other stuff and remind me stuff about economy. So yeah, okay, sources and challenges of economical growth. This could be interesting. And maybe I could apply this to my business also. What are the sources and challenges of my um, economical growth uh, in my business? Uh, well, maybe, well, I'm just going to open a new note um, because this gave me an idea. And maybe, okay, uh, oh, okay, but there is danger. Okay, we have intensive uh, um, growth and extensive growth by adding more people or increasing the, the efficiency of the different stuff. I think in my business, I only focus on intensive growth. So maybe I could also try to now, um, well, add extensive growth also in, uh, in my business and so on. And you, you see, I just generated a new ideas by just making ideas bounce, bounce on, well, different ideas. So this is how I'm generating ideas inside of Obsidian, mostly playing with the graph view right here, thanks to uh, my folder, thanks to my architecture of uh, ideas uh, based on Zettelkasten method. So as you can see, I've got central nodes of connections uh, that are right here uh, SES, which in France is uh, economic call and sociological sciences and economy right here. And so th those are what um, a guy on YouTube called uh, linking your thinking calls map of content. Basically, it's um, intermediate, um, like intermediate phases between your ideas and content you want to publish. It's like at some point I will have too much notes about economy, so I will want to organize my thinking a little bit more. So I will just be able to just take this note and I don't know put, put ideas this way. You know, uh, normative approach. Uh, proposition in an Opal company. Oh, this is interesting. And so on and so on. So you're just bouncing stuff and then you can just organize. So, oh, okay. 
we've got all of the tools. So those are all the tools about economy, uh, how to analyze something in, in some company. Uh, we, then we have uh, approaches like theories. Um, and then we have also concepts. Uh, and then I can just, once I've got those stuff, I can just put uh, more notes inside of here. So demand crisis is right here. Uh, yeah, maybe a concept. Um, this is a concept and so on and so on. So th this could be a way that you organize your thinking, but like above all, it allows you to right here, um, have better graphs when you put two levels of depth in your, in your graph view uh, around the file. So this is how I'm generating ideas inside of Obsidian. Let's continue our exploration with the part about creating content. So how am I creating content inside of Obsidian? Well, to manage my content, I'm using something that I call my content dashboard. It's right here. Basically, uh, I'm using a plugin inside of Obsidian that is called the Kanban plugin. I'm just gonna show, you, show it to you right now. Yeah, so the Kanban plugin, which is right here, and it allows you to do Kanban boards as in Trello or Notion, for example. Uh, and so you can view it this way, or you can also open the note as Markdown, and you will see it's only to-dos. So it doesn't like make you weird formatting or stuff. Um, it, it just adds this, uh, but it's quite all right. If at, at some point you want to, to escape from Obsidian or this plugin, uh, you can obviously do it. So this board is actually new because I'm just switching my content to English right now, but before I used to have one in French. But this allows me to quickly capture my ideas. Uh, so most often I'm capturing them in things, uh, which is my um, my to-do software. And then I'm adding them right here to my content dashboard, uh, but also to manage the status of my different videos that I want to publish. Uh, for example, how I use Obsidian is right here. And once I will have finished uh, shooting it, I will be able to put it inside of editing tab. And so this is how basically I'm, I'm managing my content and then how I am creating content thanks to everything I did before. So taking notes, for example, deconstructing the concepts thanks to the, the Zettelkasten method and everything is just building good outlines. For example, my book about knowledge management right here is just an assembly, a, an outline, just, um, just like assembling all of the concepts I already took before. For example, I've got this note, uh, then this note, then this note, then this note. Um, and all of those notes are small concepts right here that I took, um, that, that are notes that I took uh, from books. And so this is pretty much every content I'm, I'm writing. I'm just doing it this way. I'm just outlining and saying, I want to tell this concept, then this concept, then this concept. And this allows me to have some sort of frictionless creation because I've done all of the work before. Like, you know, there is a really good book that you saw just now uh, that is called How to Take Smart Notes. And the, the, the first sentence of this book is basically, what can you do um, before the writing starts that will allow you to make writing an easier task and, and a more pleasant task. And I completely allow with this thinking. It's like, uh, if you don't do anything, you will face a blank page and blank page is almost always scary and doesn't give you ideas and doesn't allow you to have a better experience uh, of writing something. So please prepare the work such as mise en place, uh, which is just putting when you're cooking, putting all of the ingredients in the right bowls, in the right um, cutting size and shapes, and then you will be able to assemble everything much easier. Um, so this was for how I'm creating stuff inside of Obsidian, which is just basically playing with the graph view around concepts I want to talk about to have new ideas and, and then organize, organizing them uh, inside of outlines. And finally, I would like to talk a little bit about journaling. I'm doing all of my journaling inside of Obsidian. I'm going to show you that. So I saw a great video on YouTube of a guy saying he has replaced his social media addiction with what he calls micro journaling, meaning each day you're opening a daily note like this and Every time you want to check your social medias, well, you, you don't have the app installed, so you don't do it, but instead you open your daily note and you write something down. For example, it can be as simple as I wanted to open my social medias and then you close it. But you could also expand a little bit. Oh, I've got, I, have, I, I am having this idea or I'm spending time with my mother or my father. And it's a, a much more easy way to do journaling, uh, which I believe could be much more precious because you're capturing uh, the mood and your ideas at each moment of the day. So I started to do that and 
every day I'm creating so a daily note uh, on which I'm gonna if I have to do's to plan or day to plan I'm just gonna plan it inside of my daily note. I'm also adding some journaling when I want when I have big events to 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 recap or stuff. Whenever I'm having a meeting, I'm also putting it inside of my daily notes uh, and I'm doing my macro journaling uh, along the day inside of the daily notes. I'm not really going to show it to you. I can just share, t t um, t tell you that I've got right here a tag, which is uh, hashtag daily. Quotidien is daily, but in French. If you want to learn French, by the way, I've got a great video on my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the, the daily tag, this way it allows me whenever I want to open the graph view to just uh, put in the search options. And so, you know, yeah, I can just exclude the notes that have the tag uh, quotidien by putting the minus before the, the search request. And this way I don't, it, it doesn't pollute my graph view. And I can even plan inside of the settings that all of the files that are including um, the, 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 the tag quotidien are excluded from the search. This way, they are not polluting me. That's why I'm putting the quotidien tag. And uh, my, hum my humor is basically, am I jo joyous? Am I sad or, or anything? This is a basic understanding. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The next step that I would like to, to put in my daily note is exporting my Aura Ring uh, data right in my uh, well in, in my daily note this way uh, every time i wake up i just have to open my daily note and see my aura ring data uh, and everything is linked together so i don't know how i am going to do it yet but i'm planning on doing it, doing it and so the interesting stuff also is where do i store this file so inside of my caps right here i've got something called life phases and I did a video about productivity that is going in depth inside of this concept. So if you want to learn more, you can just watch it. But uh, basically what a life phase is, is, is just sometime, I, I don't know if you feel it too, but you don't feel in the same energy as you felt before. So you were feeling really energetic. You wanted to do a lot of projects and then whew, you just feel so tired. So, so like you just want to get out to do something else, to travel, to, to, to change. And so at this point, when your energy shifts, what I do is just that I'm creating a new folder after those ones. Um, and I'm putting what I call an intention letter inside of this folder. And so for example, let's say I'm not in this mood anymore. So I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it six. And maybe it's like the Russia experiment. I don't know. I just want to go to Russia. Uh, and then what I do is just I'm creating a new note uh, with this template in it, which is an intention letter. Basically, I'm just going to go too in-depth in this because I've got a, a video on my YouTube channel, but you just put the estimated period, my intention, um, your ideal day, your main goals, uh, and then uh, some sort of fractal um, based on the intention uh, objectives that you're going to do right here in this part of the intention letter. And I'm then cluttering, like closing uh, the last phase uh, by putting a recap letter, uh, which is, uh, whoops, which is right here uh, with the overall conclusion, the lessons I learned, my favorite, my favorite moments. And this way you can also link to the daily notes. Anyway, this is life phases basically is organizing yourself, not based on trimester or any arbitrary uh, time units, but on something you feel. And uh, then, which is great, is that inside of this, uh, this folder, you can just put your journaling notes. This way they are well organized. And whenever you will want to just, well, see, like look back on your life uh, and on a specific uh, period, you will be able to have all of your daily notes that will be in the same place. And this is just, in my opinion, wonderful. You can also plan uh, your different weeks with weekly notes. I'm often uh, separating my objectives by creation, reflection, execution, and learning, basically. So this was how I'm using Obsidian to do all of the stuff. So as I told you, if you want to learn Obsidian, I got a free YouTube video on my YouTube channel. I also have a free course that you will be able to see uh, by clicking one of the links in the description. Uh, and I've got a lot of other notes about knowledge management, productivity, content publication systems, and especially I've got courses online uh, that you can check out by clicking one of the links in the description. Click uh, on the link, uh, um, with the situation that, that describes you the most and you will discover some, well, organization and personal knowledge management systems that might help you in the, your daily life, in your work and your projects and everything. Hope you like this video. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.